So welcome today to today's webinar, Sharing is Caring, Interlibrary Loans in Evergreen. In today's session, we're going to start by talking about how holds are filled in Evergreen, and then look specifically at how interlibrary loans work through Interlibrary Connect. We're going to look at hopeless holds, and then we're going to finish by looking at the methods for handling interlibrary loans uh, coming from third-party platforms, uh, such as Illum and Phil, um, and that includes using pre-cats, temporary mark records, and library patron accounts. So there are a few different processes for handling interlibrary loans in Evergreen. For interlibrary loans coming through third-party platforms like Illum and Phil, library staff are going to use pre-cats or temporary mark records for circulate, uh, circulating those to your patrons. Interlibrary Connect uses Evergreen's hold and transit functionality for interlibrary loans. And if you're part of one of the Interlibrary Connect zones, uh, we have three, uh, Spruce, Sea to Sky, and BC ILC. Um, so if you're part of one of those three zones, your library is going to have two different ILL processes. Um, so you'll use that depending on where the request is coming from, whether it's from an Interlibrary Connect uh, library in your zone um, or coming through that third party uh, platform. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how holds are placed. So when a patron or a staff member attempts to place a hold, there's several things that Evergreen actually checks first. Um, it checks a number of related library settings. It checks your hold policies and the hold policies of other libraries, um, as well as all of the holdings under the title to decide whether or not that hold can actually be placed. Um, and if the hold can be placed, Evergreen will create a hold request record, which will include basic information such as who the hold is for, the pickup library, the request time. And it also records the range of library items that can be used to fill that hold. Um, this is recorded in a field called selection depth, um, which you can see when viewing holds in either the patron account or the title record. Now the value in selection depth is either going to be a two or a three. Um, and as you can see on the slide here, a three means the hold can be filled by items belonging to the owning library or system. So if you're a multi-branch, uh, any of the items in your system can fill that hold. And a two means the hold can actually be filled by any holdable item within your uh, reciprocal borrowing zone. Now, when a hold is placed, Evergreen also creates a table of items that are eligible to fill that hold. And when an item's checked in, Evergreen quickly goes through that copy uh, table for that item to check whether it's requested. And Evergreen's actually going to check for eligible copies that can fill holds every 15 minutes after a hold is placed for the first 24 hours. And then after the 24 hours has passed, Evergreen checks once a day at roughly the time that the hold was originally placed. And if it finds a new item that can uh, potentially fill that hold, it'll add it to the table. Um, and if that is an available item, it'll put it on the library's hold pull list. Now, there may be multiple copies available, um, but only one copy will get put on a pull list at a time. Um, but if your library has two copies of an item and you check in one and the other one's the one that was on the pull list, um, that one being checked in will fill that hold. Now, Evergreen does retarget holds at least once a day. Um, and it will remove the current target and then pick a new one. So if there's multiple items that could fill that hold, it drops the one that it currently has been targeted and looks at another one, which is why when using Interlibrary Connect, you you may see items disappearing from your holds pull list um, because they've been targeted to another library if you weren't able to uh, pull that from your shelf uh, in that 24 hour period. Now, coming back to selection depth, and the reason it's got its own slide here, um, is it's really important to know that the selection depth is not editable, and Evergreen doesn't automatically reassess the selection depth if the availability of those potential items changes. So, for example, a common situation is if a library's item has gone missing, 
And so that hold now needs to be filled by an interlibrary connect uh, item. So to actually get Evergreen to fill that hold with an interlibrary connect item, you actually have to cancel the hold and place a new hold because that new hold, when Evergreen places the hold, it'll say, okay, your library has no eligible items to fill that hold. So we're gonna place it with a selection depth of two and let anything in the ILC zone fill that hold. Uh, so that is a quick overview of how holds are filled in Evergreen. Um, there is more information in the manual uh, and a link to that page is included in the handout. Uh, so I'm now going to uh, turn off the slideshow here and we're gonna come over to uh, the Maple Public Library on our training server public catalog and we're going to uh, go through the Interlibrary Connect process. So Interlibrary Connect uses Evergreen's hold and transit functionality to facilitate interlibrary loans without requiring third-party software to track them. Um, and this is the process that any Spruce, Sea to Sky, or BC ILC holds should use. Um, and it is important to ensure that any ILC requests between libraries in your zone are already, or sorry, are always done through Evergreen. So Spruce libraries shouldn't be using fill to request an item from another Spruce library, and BC libraries participating in BC ILC shouldn't use a loom to request an item from another from another library in that zone. Now there is one uh, major difference between the BC ILC zone and the two other zones, and that's that BC ILC allows for patron initiated holds, while Spruce and Sea to Sky only allow for staff initiated holds. So we're going to start this process in the public catalog. Um, but if you are a Spruce or Sea to Sky library, um, you would start by placing this hold in the staff side. So we're going to start and we're going to switch to searching the entire federation here. So we're going to choose Public Library Federation rather than just Maple Library. And I'm going to do the search for the item that I want. I want Solstice Badger. So we've searched the entire Public Library Federation and we can see that there's one copy available and it's at Arbutus Public Library. So we're going to place a hold and it's going to be an interlibrary connect hold. So I'm going to click place hold. I'll sign in with my patron account. and I can place my hold. My pickup location is gonna be Maple. Um, I wanna get my hold notification by email. And so I'll just click Submit. And then I can go back to my search, continue on, place additional holds if I wish. Um, one thing to note is that almost every ILC hold should be placed as a title level hold. Um, and the exception to that is that call number holds can be used when bringing in extra copies for a book club. Um, but you should never place an item level hold uh, as those holds will not be filled through ILC. Um, Evergreen just won't fill item level holds through Interlibrary Connect. So always use a title level hold except when bringing in extra copies, and then you can use a call number level hold. So we've placed our hold. Now we need to sign into the staff client. So I've signed into the staff client and I've actually signed in at our Butis Public Library because that's who owns the item uh, that our patron wants. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to circulation and pull list for holds request. So we can see here um, that I've got a number of items on my pull list, including one here that's showing the pickup library as MPL, so Maple. So that's the one that I just placed a request for. Um, and you can use that pickup library column to tell which items are being pulled for local holds. 
and which ones are going to fill interlibrary loans um, based on their pickup library. Or if you're a multi-branch library, you can also see what's moving between your branches. Now, if you are able to fill the hold, you'll pull the item, you'll check it in, which we'll do in a moment. Um, but it may be that you can't actually fill the hold. Um, and if you're not able to hold fill the hold, there's a few different things you can do. One is you can select that uh, item on the pull list and from, from the drop down menu, you can choose either mark item damaged or mark item missing. So if you can't find the item, it's a good idea to mark it missing. Um, if you find the item, but it's in a condition that you can't send it out at, in, um, you can mark that item as damaged. And then Evergreen knows that that item is no longer in a holdable state. Um, and Evergreen will immediately search for a different available item and put it either back on your pull list if you have multiple items, um, or if it's an ILC hold, it'll be put onto somebody else's pull list. Also, you can just leave the item on the pull list. So if there's some reason that you're just not able to pull Interlibrary Connect holds a particular day, um, you can just leave the item on the pull list and once a day Evergreen will retarget those holds and it'll remove that current target and pick a new one. So unless your library is the only uh, library with an item or sorry, with that particular item, um, that hold will get moved to somebody else's pull list. Um, if your item can't be found though, and especially if it sh keeps showing up on the pull list, it is really important to mark that item as missing because um, that causes the hold to become hopeless um, if you have the only copy. And then it appears on the hopeless holds list for the pickup library, and they can then take further action to try and get that item for their patron. Um, and it is really important to remember that you should never cancel a hold that has been placed for pickup at another library. Um, so if your item has been targeted and you can't fill the hold, mark it as missing, mark it as damaged, or just leave it on the pull list so it, uh, Evergreen will move it along. Um, but uh, don't cancel it because uh, the library needs to, the library where the item is going to be picked up needs to do that canceling so they can follow up with their patron. So in this case, we have the item on the shelf, we've pulled it, and we're gonna go to circulation and check-in. So we scan that item in. And here we have a transit slip telling us to send it on to Maple. Um, and we haven't set up hold addresses on the training server, but on the live server, you will see the hold address uh, for the location you're sending it to. Um, and we can see that it is a hold transit slip because we've got the hold information displaying there as well. So you may print the slips, pardon me, you may print the slip or not, so I'm not gonna print. And then you take that item, set it aside, give it to your ILL clerk to be packed and sent on to the appropriate library. So the item is now uh, in, uh, in transit. So I'm gonna log out of Arbutus, and now I'm gonna log into Maple. So here we are now at the Maple Public Library and we've got a delivery from Canada, Canada Post of items that have come in. We're gonna to go to circulation and check-in. And we're going to unpack those items that have arrived and check them in. So now we have a hold slip for that item that's telling us to put the item onto our public hold shelf. And the patron has been automatically notified if they've requested notification by email or text. And one important thing to remember with notification is the default for email is a five minute delay. Um, which is customizable for libraries. Some libraries like to put that to like 30 minutes um, to have more time to process the items before the patron is notified that the item's available. Um, text messages have a 30 minute delay and that is not customizable. Uh, so if you do check an item out to a patron account uh, before that delay has passed, 
um, Evergreen won't send notifications because the item's already checked out. Um, so it doesn't think that the patron still needs to be notified. Uh, so just something to keep in mind if you're ever checking out items uh, without the patron actually uh, arriving. So in this case, I'm also going to say do not print. The item is now placed on our hold shelf. When the patron comes in, we'll go to circulation checkout. I bring up my patron. I can see that my patron has a hold available, so I'll go to checkout. And I'll check that item out to my patron. So my patron now has the Solstice Badger checked out. When the patron is finished and brings it back, we'll go to circulation and check in. And we'll check that item back in. And we'll get the prompt again. Now, it's very important to make sure you're reading the prompt carefully, as there's three possible prompts that you can get here. So one, which is what we currently have here, is a transit slip to send the item home. Two, you might get a transit slip to send it to a different library um, to fill an interlibrary loan there. Or three, you might actually get a new hold slip to fill a hold at your own library. Um, so you want to make sure you uh, pay attention to what pops up because you might not be sending that item home. In this case, we're sending it home though. So I'm going to say, do not print. We'll package and ship that item uh, home. If it was going somewhere else, we'd ship it on to its uh, new destination. And then we're going to log out one more time here because we need to go back to our Butis. And I have done that again without changing the workstation. Just bear with me. So now the item has arrived back at its home library. We go to circulation and check in. And once again, we check that item in. In this case, it is now uh, going just back onto the shelf. Um, it's possible when you check that item in at your home library that maybe it's now filling a hold for uh, one of your patrons that was placed while it was in transit. Um, so it either will give you a slip or can just be uh, shelved. So there's some important things to remember about Interlibrary Connect. Um, one of the most important things to remember is that you determine what items from your library participate. Your hold policies can be set to use age hold protection to prevent your brand new items from being used for interlibrary loans. And we can also set your hold policies up to block holds for specific types of items based on the circulation modifier. So for example, if you have a library of things collection, um, and everything in that collection uses the circulation modifier equipment, we can set up policies to restrict holds on items using the circulation modifier equipment to only be picked up at your library or to only be holdable for patrons whose home library is your library. Um, so if you're finding that it, either items aren't going out on Interlibrary Connect that you would expect to go, or that there's items that are being requested that your library won't actually send, um, let support know because we may just need to tweak your policies. For BC Interlibrary Connect, your public library will allow patrons to search all the libraries in your zone, and you have the option to choose whether the default search is your library or the entire zone. Um, and that's something that if you want swapped, uh, you just need to send in a ticket to support. When an item is going through the Interlibrary Connect process, it follows the policy of the checkout library when it's checked out. And because it's been checked out at that library, the pre-due and overdue notices are also generated from the checkout library. And to make sure that your statistics are accurate, 
The only time a transit on an Interlibrary Connect item should be aborted is if the lending library decides not to lend that item after already sending it in transit to Evergreen. Um, and there's a number of report templates in the shared Sitka templates um, that you can use to run different interlibrary loan statistics. Um, and the last important thing to remember, which is going to be different from what we look at in a moment, um, is that for Interlibrary Connect, you must always use the barcode on the actual item. Now, if uh, libraries need to close interlibrary loan, or sorry, if libraries need to close interlibrary connect for a period of time, um, you do need to submit a ticket to co-op support uh, because we need to update your hold policies for that. Um, updating those hold policies is a little complex. So in general, we only close interlibrary connect if the closure is gonna be at least two weeks in length. Um, for short closures, we recommend that staff simply not pull items from the pull list um, that have a pickup library other than their own. Um, as we've talked about, those holds are gonna be retargeted to another item, um, assuming your library doesn't own the only uh, copy. And incoming items can be left until the staff member who handles ILLs returns um, or is once again able to uh, process the interlibrary loans. Um, and there's no notification to the patron um, until those items are checked in. So if they're sitting there uh, still packaged, uh, your patron doesn't know that they're at the library yet. For longer closures, co-op support can update your hold policies to prevent uh, both your patrons from placing holds on items belonging to other libraries, as well as block patrons from other libraries from placing holds on items belonging to your library. And patrons will be able to place holds uh, if they select the owning library as the pickup library. Um, so if you're allowing local holds, somebody could pl uh, place a hold to be picked up at your library and come in to pick up that hold. Um, and a, a good question in the chat here. Um, if you are looking at... Um, the, well, it's going to say, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to pull up Burns Lake here. So the question was, how do you determine if you're in uh, the BC Libraries uh, Interlibrary Connect zone? And I'm going to spell libraries correctly because that will work better. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is to come to a known participating library like Burns Lake and take a look at the list. And then you can see everybody who's currently participating in the BC Interlibrary Connect Zone. Um, and if there are BC public libraries not currently participating in BC ILC who want to join, um, please do contact support um, and we can provide you with more information as well as uh, have you joined the zone if that's what you want to do. So coming back over to the training server, I'm just going to switch over to Maple for the rest of what we're going to do today. And question in the chat, is there any time you'd want to return a book to the loaning library instead of sending it on to a new hold at another library? Um, not if Evergreen is telling you to. Uh, so in, I'd say 99.9% .9 of situations, um, you need to follow what Evergreen is telling you to do with that item. Um, possibly if something is badly damaged, you might want to contact uh, the owning library um, and send that item directly home uh, rather than send it on to somebody else to fill a hold. Um, in that case, you would need to send it home without, well, it would, it would go in either without checking it into transit You'd probably need to send it checked in to transit, send it home, but contact the library that it says you're sending it to and let them know that it's been damaged and is going home. Um, but that's really the only 
reason I can think off the top of my head as to why you would uh, uh, do it that way. Um, is there some way to set BC Interlibrary Connect to the top of the library's list when you pick a library after yours? Um, in way, uh, in what interface? Uh, when placing a hold for a patron. Um, I want to say no. Um, let's just pull up a record here. And I have a lot of IL or, uh, electronic ones there. Um, so if we were to place a hold here, um, so the drop down menu is just going to follow the tree. Um, by default, you if you're a BC ILC library or a Spruce library, you're going to be within your zone in the list, um, and it is alphabetical. Um, and I can show on the live server uh, after we uh, finish everything else. So I'm going to take us to administration and local administration, and we're going to go to hopeless holds. Now, all libraries should regularly check their hopeless holds list. Um, as of this morning, I checked and across all of Sitka, there were 620 hopeless holds. And this is where holds can be found or go if they can't be filled. Um, so if local holds, uh, you're item has gone missing, or if there's no item that can fill the hold across the entire ILC zone, um, this is where you're going to find those holds. And there's a few different things that you might want to do with these. Um, if it's a local hold, you might want to cancel that hold and place it again as an interlibrary connect hold if your item uh, has gone to lost or missing. Um, if you don't participate in ILC or if the item isn't available via ILC, you may want to decide whether to purchase the item, uh, use your third party platform to request an ILL request, um, or you may have to tell the patron that the item can't be obtained. Um, and from the drop down menu, you can see you have uh, some options, including cancel hold. Um, so it's a good thing to come in on a regular bas basis, review the holds here. Uh, place new holds when you can, uh, go through your uh, alum or fill when needed. Um, and as I said, you know, either purchase an item or in some cases possibly tell your patron uh, the item's just not available. So now we're going to look at how to handle interlibrary loans where the request is being placed through a third party platform like alum or fill. So we're going to start with precats, also known as pre-cataloged items. And these are temporary records that are created at the time of checkout. And precats are most commonly used for third-party ILLs. Um, so when using precats, we recommend that you have a set of barcodes that you recycle to avoid creating hundreds of precats in the system. And those pre uh, barcodes might take the form of actual barcoded cards, like index cards or something you create with cardstock um, that are scanned and attached to the interlibrary loan while it circulates. If your library uses RFID, you'll need to RFID that barcode card. When doing a pre-cat, it's very important to never use the item's actual barcode. Um, for Spruce libraries, if the item is coming from a library that later joins Sitka. It causes duplicate barcode issues. Um, for BC libraries, it's even more important because the item you're borrowing could be coming from another Sitka BC library that isn't part of the zone. Um, and using the actual barcode changes the item status in Evergreen. And so with that, if your library uses RFID and the interlibrary loan has an RFID tag, then you also need to make sure that that item doesn't get near your RFID pad 
um, especially if it belongs to another Sitka library as the pads can read the barcode. And this means that some interlibrary uh, loans might not be able to be self-picked up at libraries if you have RFID self-checks because you need to make sure the correct barcode um, is being used. So you'll use, follow your normal pr procedures for receiving the item in your third-party interlibrary loan system and contact your patron manually. Uh, when the patron comes in, we'll retrieve the patron's account. And then we're going to scan in the barcode for the pre-cap. And we get this pop-up. Um, so we're going to put in a title. Um, and some libraries will put the title in all in caps uh, to make it easily identifiable as a pre-cat ILL record. Um, and then we need to choose our circulation modifier. And it's important to know what circulation modifier you should be choosing um, because this will look at your circulation policies to decide how to handle the loan of this item. So this library has ILL, oh, ILL no renewal set up in their circulation policies um, so that items go up for three weeks with no renewals. Um, you can also fill in author and ISBN. Um, whether or not you do is up to your library's local policies. So I'm going to click pre-cat checkout. And that item is now checked out for three weeks with no renewals. Um, if you use barcodes on cards, you'd attach the barcode to the item give the item to the patron, and then when the patron returns it, we'll go to circulation and check-in. We'll check that item in using that barcode card. It lets us know the item needs to be routed to cataloging. So if you recycle those cards, you'd put it in your designated spot to be reused. If you don't reuse them, what you should be doing is going to circulation and item status, scanning in that barcode, and then from the actions menu going delete items. And that deletes that temporary uh, barcode. Then you take your item, go through your third normal third party interlibrary loan system uh, to send it back home. At that time, if the library belongs to another Sitka library, so this is applicable for the BC libraries, you could check that item in a second time using its real barcode, which will trigger it to go in transit back to its home library. But you need to make sure you're including all the ILL paperwork so that the staff at the owning library know to finish off the procedure in a loom. So some important things to remember about pre-cats are they're temporary, they're not visible in the public catalog. They only really exist as long as the item's checked out. You want to make sure you choose that correct circulation modifier so that the item follows the loan duration and number of renewals, et cetera, as you expect. Um, and don't use the barcode off the physical item. Uh, you need to use your own barcodes for those. Now, there is another option instead of using pre-cats, which is temporary mark records. And these are created ahead of time, and you can update the title and the author information when the interlibrary loan is received. The big difference here is that temporary mark records, it's your interlibrary loan staff who would be doing the uh, data entry, whereas with pre-cats, that's going to be uh, uh, on the circulation desk. Um, the other thing is that if you use the temporary mark records, you can take advantage, as, advantage of Evergreen's automatic notifications. So I'm going to go to cataloging and item buckets because I've set up a set of records here. So I've got my bucket ILL mark records. And I've got four records in here that are four interlibrary loans. You can see they've got a call number of ILL, They've got a location of interlibrary loan, and that shelving location has been set to not be OPAC or not be OPAC visible, so that these don't show up in the public catalog. Um, 
you can't see it with these columns, but they also all have a uh, circulation modifier of ILL no renewal. Um, so they'll follow the expected policy for that. Um, and uh, we, in our documentation, in the policy manual, we have it all outlined, um, the recommendations for setting up these records. Now, if we have an interlibrary loan come in, we'll come into our bucket and we'll say, okay, we've got one that's on the hold shelf, one that's checked out, but we've got two that are available. So we'll use one of these two for this new item. So I'm just gonna click on the one that says Title I ILL. And I'm gonna go into Mark Edit. And I'm gonna change that author. And I'm gonna put in the actual title. And you can see we've got a couple things. And again, this is all in the documentation. But for the 245, it's got a subfield B with ILL. It also, which is very important, has a 599 field with a subfield A ILL and a subfield 9 with the library code. And this is so that if other libraries come across these uh, brief records or if co-op support come across them, we know that they're an interlibrary loan temporary record for a library um, and not something that needs to be replaced with a full record. So we'll save our changes. So we now have the title and author appearing and we'll now place a hold for our patron. So I've got the patron's barcode. You can also search for the patron. So I'm gonna place that hold. And now if I go to circulation and check in, and I'm actually just gonna go return and make sure I grab the right barcode here. So I'm gonna to go to circulation and check in, check in that barcode. And again, you probably wanna use barcoded cards. We get the trigger that the item should be routed to the public's hold shelf. Um, and in this case, the patron is gonna get an automatic email. So I'm gonna say, do not print. And now the patron uh, will come in, we'll check that item out to the patron. And I'm realizing I lost that barcode. Um, we would check the item out to the patron um, again, we check it back in when it comes back in. Um, and actually I can just pull that barcode from here. So we'll check that out to our patron. You can see it has zero renewals because we've set it up with the ILL no renewal circulation modifier. When the patron returns it, we'll go back to check in, check in the item. And now what you wanna do is go to the record. So I'm just clicking on the title there. And in Mark Edit, we can change this back to Title One, Author. Um, and then it's ready for the next interlibrary loan that comes in to use that. Again, with the actual item, you would return it to its originating library using the procedure for your third party software. Some important things to remember about the temporary mark records um, is that you should make sure the shelving location that you use isn't visible in the public catalog. Um, when you add items to the temporary records, you want to make sure that the item is using the correct circulation modifier so that you're gonna get the expected policy um, and you want to make sure that you place for the, the hold for the patron before you check the item in, um, because otherwise they won't be automatically notified. Um, and the temporary mark records, one of the big advantages of using them is that automatic notification. So the last piece of this is the outgoing interlibrary loans. 
So there are patron permission profiles for ILL, so the PL ILL and the POSEC ILL um, that are intended for accounts that you create for other libraries. So if I go to search and search for patrons, I'm going to use the last name ILL. And you can see that's the convention that we have here at Maple. And so I have a number of accounts that are using the PL ILL profile. Um, they allow you to check items, uh, check out items that are going to other libraries so that they show as checked out in Evergreen so your patrons know they're not there and available. Um, and it also makes it easy to follow up with the library about all of the items that have been sent to them through interlibrary loan. And if we pull up the Pinalis Public Library here, you can see we've put their email address in for their ILL department. Um, and having done this, Evergreen will send the courtesy and overdue notices um, to the library to let them know about the items coming due. Um, so the workflow for sending out interlibrary loans through the patron accounts is to follow the normal procedure through your third-party ILL system to identify the items that you need to pull and send out to other libraries, pull those items from the shelf, retrieve the uh, relevant public library or relevant library account. Um, you could see we had a naming convention here where the last name is ILL, um, which makes it relatively easy to retrieve. Um, you may also want to do a naming convention with the barcode um, so that you know what to type in, especially if there are uh, more than the four or five libraries that you're sending to that you, we, you see on the Maple uh, server here. Then we'll check out the items that are going to that library. Now, one other advantage of the PL ILL account um, is that you can set it so that it has different circulation policies uh, than your regular patrons. Um, so for example, you can see with this one, um, this item's actually gonna be going out until the 27th of June. Um, so we've got an extended loan period built in um, to account for travel, the patron actually getting the item and the item traveling back. Uh, if your library charges fines, we can also set these accounts to be fine free if you don't actually charge overdue fines to the borrowing libraries. Um, and then staff don't have to be going through and uh, forgiving or voiding those fines. Um, so there's some things we can do to make uh, things easier for staff. Now, the really important thing is that if you're an interlibrary connect library, you don't do this for other libraries in your zone. So for Spruce libraries, you should never have an account like this for another Spruce library. And for BC libraries, you should only have accounts like this for BC Sitka libraries that aren't in your BC zone or your BC ILC zone. You'll follow your normal procedures uh, to send the item to the borrowing library. And then when the item is sent back, you'll follow the normal procedures through that third party system to return the item. And then you'll go to circulation and check in and check the, those items in. And that will set them back to the status of reshelving. Uh, so that is how to uh, handle outgoing interlibrary loans uh, from your library. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.